Coming up is a video on how to optimize your Google Play listing to increase downloads. I know I've been sharing a lot on the iOS side, but this video will prove that I've got the skills on Google Play as well. Stay tuned. What is up, App Nation? It is Steve P. Young, the hostess with the mostest, founder of AppMasters.co, the greatest, no, <laughs> the app marketing agency where we are growth hackers really aimed at increasing downloads on a budget. If you got a spinning wheel already with acquisition, what well, we can help you make that spinning wheel go faster. And if you haven't gotten anything, any traction so far, we can help you get that early traction and get that app moving along. But today, the video that you are about to watch is the exact video that we have in a course called ASO Masters that walks you through step-by-step -step on our ASO process. Now, this is a process that we've seen consistently increase downloads for our clients. And the, the proof, you just go to our website at masters.co, the homepage, we give you recent wins recent wins, not just case studies that are two years old. These are things that are happening right now. And we feel so stinking confident with our ASO skills. And I want you to test me, test us. But I'm willing to share all this strategy because we know we're good. We know we are good. We're gonna keep pushing it. But this video that you're about to watch walks you through the exact process that we use on Google Play. How do you come up with the app name? How do you optimize the short description, which is really important? And then how do you optimize the long description? Now how do you determine which keywords to actually pick when you're trying to do the optimization? We've seen some good results already for our clients. We've helped the client go from number three, I know he's already pretty high, to number one for a really competitive term. And then we've helped other clients increase their downloads on Google Play just with this exact process that you are about to see. So if you want to get learn more, if you after the video, you love the video, which I know you will love, but if you want to learn about the course, go to asomasters.co or if you want to hire us and work with us, feel free to reach out to us at masters.co, fill out the contact form and let's talk. All right, enjoy the video. In this video, I want to show you how to optimize your app name and your app description in Google Play. So the key differences between iOS and Google Play are that one, iOS is a lot more fun, frankly, but you have the app name, you have the keyword field and the description. On Google Play, unfortunately, you only have the app name and you even have less characters. So on the iOS side, you have 50 characters. On the Google Play side, you only have 30 characters to play with and you're reliant on the app description and the app name and that's it. So it's a lot less fun. There's no double localizations and all this fun stuff that we can do on iOS. I found that it's a lot more enjoyable for me to really work on the ASO on the iOS side. Google Play, it's just like, eh, whatever type of thing. But also I wanna be fully upfront with you. The success that we've seen from a downloads perspective has always been on iOS. So I'm gonna walk you through my process, but I feel a lot stronger on iOS than I do on Google Play. And it's a lot more fun anyways. So here we go. This is again, real data that I've pulled from a client. I deleted the app name and the actual keywords that we're using, but you can see, get a sense. So what it's the same process that I do on iOS if you watch that video, but if you haven't, here's what we do again on Google play. Now with Google play, you're only going to get the traffic and difficulty. And from what I've seen, pretty much every single keyword is really difficult on Google play. It's just weird like that, especially in sensor tower data. It's just like, what can I possibly target? Luckily, mobile action has a chance score where there's, as you can see, good volume. So what I've done here is again, I've done conditional formatting. So anything under three, three and under, it's green. And then anything with a 70 and up is green. So this is the difficulty scores from both platforms so that I can easily see if they both line up like this back pain or even physical therapy. All right, that's a keyword maybe worth targeting for me. So, and you could use this data to actually build apps. So maybe somebody could come up with a back pain app or a physical therapy app that we don't already have. All right, so again, what I do is I sort by search score. Again, 
I actually rely on mobile action search score. I kind of like that a little bit better. And it's a keyword that I want to target. I put X's. So I put an X's again. That I want to target. So I go through the whole list, kind of think through the decent amount of traffic scores. It's relevant to what my app does. And I'll start putting X's. And then I'll sort the X's. So on iOS, I get to kind of decide where they go. Does it go in the app name? Does it go in the keyword field? Does it go in the Spanish Mexico localization if you're targeting the US? No, I get to sort of decide that. Watch that video for that. But for Google Play, I get to only decide one thing. Where does it go, app name or the description? So I really think through, if I put an X there, then I'm most likely gonna be targeting it in the actual play description. But for here, I kind of just decide, well, you're, you only have room for maybe the app name and another keyword. So for here, you know, based on the data, depending on what the app does, again, I like to above everything else, but even all above all the scores that you see here, it has to be relevant. So if homeopath is not relevant to this app, I'm not going to have it in the app name or a good scenario is physical therapy isn't that relevant to this app. So while the, the scores are great and the traffic and the chance, the difficulty, they're all great. Like everything is great about this keyword. I'm not, I didn't have it in the actual app name because the last thing we want to do is disappoint the user and say, we're number one or top five for physical therapy. They download the app and we just don't talk about physical therapy at all. While it's somewhat related, in the future, we will have this. It's just not something that we are strong in right now. So we don't have that. So really think through that. Like the end year user is top of mind in all this. So right now we have the app name and then we have, let's just do physical therapy because we really like the data on that. And you can see we're almost at 30. So here's the length of this, we're at 26. We have three more characters because of the space left okay so that's what you probably only have room for your app name and a keyword that you might be targeting so that's the actual app name the google play description here's how i like to do it this is a you'll have this worksheet as well i have notes which are just the keywords that we're targeting and as you can see i've deleted the long description but this is just the amount of times that these keywords appear in the long description now the general rule of thumb is about five times I think you know that's nice. It's just something that we can put in our head, but keyword density is probably more important than the number of times it appears. So if you have like a keyword that appears five times in a 100 word description, then that's really dense, right? It's 5% of the time. So I like to use the five times rule of thumb because our descriptions get pretty long, but it's up to you on how you wanna do it. That's my general rule of thumb. If you wanna go keyword dense or just the number of times it appears. The other thing to take note is Google has a short description that is only 80 characters. So I treat this as a keyword field on iOS. So a lot of times you'll see the keywords that I really want to target, I'll put into the short description. And it's very important for me to do that. So if I had, going back to my earlier example, physical therapy, I might find get great information on physical therapy or the best information on physical therapy. I'll have that, I'll double dip again on that just because I wanna rank really well for it. And then the long description, again, I'm gonna to try to repeat as many keywords as possible. With the long description, what we'll try to do is you're limited to 40 characters, so really have a good description in place. And I'm gonna share with you my sort of thought process on how I write good app descriptions. Have that in place, but think through which keywords you wanna target and make sure you sprinkle them inside the long description as much as possible. And if you're targeting a phrase, so for instance, text messaging for this one or text messenger, try to keep them together as much as possible. Definitely have text and messenger, but try to have the phrase together as much as possible as well. There's a lot of ways you can hack that system, but you know, think through that as well. You know, Google Play, like I said, it's not as fun because on iOS, just so many different variables that you have to play with and you can control. But reviews are important again, and that's in a, another video in another section if you want to figure out how to buy apps or reviews. But Google Play, again, relying on the app name and then the descript descriptions.